Dar es Salaam, where the Pan-Africanist Congress, the PAC of Azania, is constructing a village for its refugee population. The PAC is a liberation movement fighting for independence and self-determination of the African people in Azania. Azania is the name that the PAC has designated for a future liberated South Africa. PAC was founded at Orlando, Soweto, in 1959 where it elected Mangali Sosobukwe as its first president. PAC's main demand is the return of the land to the African people, who are its rightful owners. Ours is a national struggle. The basic thing, therefore, at, uh, in a way of Zania is the question of land. We of the PAC, from the very formation of the PAC have committed ourselves to wresting power 
taking power from the race breaking and getting that power to transform the society into a socialist society. Apina Amakawati Apina Amakawati 11 months after its formation, the PEC targeted the hated past laws for its campaign. It called upon the African people to leave their parties at home and surrender themselves at police stations. Sobukwe led the march in person. He said, We have said in the past, and we say so now, that we are not prepared to have our people used for cannon fodder. Right from the beginning of this campaign, the leaders will be in front. They will do so under the slogan of no bail, no defense, no fine. And that slogan will not be changed until we land on the shores of freedom and independence. Despite the measures the PSC took to ensure that the campaign would be peaceful and non-violent, the police opened fire in Langa, Sharpville and other places killing 80 people and wounding over 300. The people of Azania were not cowed by this act of brutality. In the Cape Peninsula, PAC leader Philip Hosanna led a crowd of over 60,000 on the Houses of Parliament. But for PAC leaders now in jail, the brutality continued. The PAC senior vice president, George Zwide Siwisa, was killed in prison. The state alleged that he had died of natural causes. The PAC was eventually outlawed and with it the then 48-year-old African National Congress. In memory of the struggle waged by PAC cadres, the United Nations General Assembly has since declared March the 21st the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. In 1961, the PAC launched armed struggle. Its army, fought for, was mass-based and the first such movement in the history of South Africa with both an urban and rural following. The panga was the PAC's chief weapon. In 1963, six PAC militants became the first political prisoners to be jailed for life on Robben Island. Many others were sentenced to death. Towards the end of the 60s, the Black Consciousness Movement emerged under the leadership of Steve Biko, a new era of open African resistance had begun. Uh, I'd like to see groups like ALC, PAC, and the Black Consciousness Movement deciding to form one liberation group. And it is only, I think, when black people are so dedicated and so united in their cause uh, that we can effect the greatest results. In 1976, Azanian students revolted against the oppressive system. Many were killed by the police. During the aftermath of the students' uprising, PAC President Zef Motuping was among those charged and sentenced for inciting the uprisings. These events have therefore burdened the PAC with a large refugee population. The settlement at Rubu shall remedy this problem and serve as an academic training place for those whom the obtaining situation in South Africa has denied a home, an education and a scope for personal development. <laughs> Yes, it's a good thing.
With the help of the United Nations Interagency Mission, the PAC has produced a master plan for the development of the area. And this plan here, this low cost settlement, has been designed, of course, on low cost basis by our consultants, is going to cost not less than 6 million US dollars. That is to build this village. That, that is apart from requirements for agriculture. That is apart from requirements for infrastructure. So that you can say <laughs> that uh, all in all, all in all, for the development of that place, everything overall, we need not less, we will need not less than 10 million dollars. It's a huge task for the convenience of both ourselves and also the donors that we are going to go into. Uh, we have devised in such a way that the development of this place shall take place in phases. <laughs> The Norwegian government contributed 300,000 US dollars for the construction of the 14 kilometer feeder road into the settlement. Due to seasonal floods, a further amount had to be stopped, and the government of the Netherlands donated an additional amount. Most of the grounds around the settlement is almost flat. When there are heavy rains, therefore, the road is flooded. The level of the road has to be raised and the culverts ensure that the water flows beneath. Building these culverts constitute the most expensive aspect of the road construction exercise. Anybody will appreciate, of course, that without the road as a means of communication, no development of ever can take place. So these are the infrastructural requirements therefore, that uh, are required in that place. We have to see to that you bring in water so that people that are there can be having water to, uh, to, for, for domestic consumption. Presently, water is carried in a truck to the settlement. There is an obvious need for this water to be treated against impurities. These structures will house the engines that will pump the water into a tank in the settlement, about five kilometers uphill. This facility has been funded with the help of the Tanzanian Christian Refugee Services. The United 
United Nations Development Program, the UNDP, has contributed funds and an expert for the agricultural project. The inmates of the settlement plan to expand this poultry farm. They are also experimenting in the rearing of various other animals. But also high on the list of priorities is the building of structures for human habitation. We have already begun constructing some, some, some dwellings, as I have already explained. So that what we do is we start constructing, or we start working, with whatever funds that we get from time to time, however little they may be, we get down and employ those and, 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 and work. Presently, our very greatest need now, apart from anything else, we need dwellings for families that must be taken and stay in, in our settlement. We need uh, about 10 dwellings. Ten, house, ten houses for married people, five semi-detached and, 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 and five detached. And uh, we need uh, uh, dormitories for single persons, for single men and single women. And we need, of course, uh, um, dining hall facilities, kitchen and dining hall for those people to Stay there and, uh, and have your meal. <laughs> are studying for their high school examinations under the Southern African Extension Unit, which is sponsored by the Commonwealth. They rely on a makeshift library, which has only a few books. The PAC is appealing to organizations and individuals to donate towards the various efforts for the improvement of life in the settlement. For instance, clothing is one specific assistance which individuals on their own can collect and send and send this to us. Reading material, for instance, books, magazines, and so on, another thing that uh, individuals can. Can, can organize and send to us. Read their uh, uh, classroom material, books, talks, things like that, and everything like that, writing material and all those things. All these activities take place within the social milieu of the local village life. So with medical requirements, the inmates of the settlement have to share medical facilities with the people from surrounding villages. The PAC uses its own medical assistance for such tasks and the local population is not required to pay any medical fees. Only the most serious cases are referred to the regional hospital. A new medical center is being built with the assistance of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Recently, the Nigerian Defense Minister, Lieutenant General Domkat Bali, toured the settlement and laid a foundation plaque for the clinic. <laughs> Among the places the minister toured was the mechanical agriculture workshop which has been built with the assistance of the United Nations and friendly countries. It is part of this workshop that is used for a number of occasions, including commemorative gatherings. Sasa tunasubiri wa jamaa wa hapa kwetu grupu sijui itakwaje
Yeah. 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 Yeah.